So, first things first, guys, how are you? Doing good, good, thank you. Good, yeah. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Well, of course. So what I want to start with is singles. Uh, last album did very well. Now, after having made the, the new record, how do you look back at that album? Um, it was a big, uh, I, think, I think we learned, I think with every record we've made, um, you know, in making the next record, uh, you're always looking back at the last one to see the things that uh, the things that worked, the things that didn't work, things you wish you could change. Um, right. th that's more in the recording process, uh, more so than in uh, the songs themselves. I think the songwriting process for us has always stayed uh, <clears throat> more or less the same. Um, you know, uh, and that that was really important to us in writing this record because with the success of uh, singles. Um, you know, I, I think some bands might want to kind of change or go off the deep end because they think that they need to do they need to do something different to uh, to uh, raise the bar higher and or uh, sustain that level that new level. Right. But uh, but you know, we've I think part of it is our our history, our uh, the fact we've been doing this for so long. This is sure. actually uh, I think for some people that think singles was our first album. Um, and not real and thinking that the far field will be our second album <laughs> is actually our fifth and uh, so w with that maturity and understanding that uh, we, we had to kind of uh, not think about those uh, the, the extra ears and eyes on the record and think more uh, well we got here to this point and we created an album singles that had uh, its, un its own singular success mm -hmm. by doing what we've always done and building upon uh, uh, you know the way we've always written songs so instead of doing something drastic we we uh, chose to simply continue to do what we've always done um and write songs the way we've always written and try not to overthink this uh the process sure. well what's interesting about this is and you mentioned uh singles so so how what was the thought process when you were making singles did you know uh, that it was a uh, it was going to be received differently than, than the work that you've done before did it, did, while you were in the studio, did it feel like something different? Uh, uh, it was our first time working in a. It was our first time working in like a real studio. Mm -hmm. um, everything before that was recorded with a portable recording setup uh, that we set up in just our houses or friends' houses or um, different places. Um, uh, and and also moving to 4AD, this was we, you know we expected. We, we we thought things were gonna be a step up, okay. but I think uh, I think it took us it, we it was a bigger step than we thought it was gonna be, um, and I think a lot of that had to do with um, the way that the our performance on Letterman caught on and uh, and that uh, with that plus that um, when the album came out and then just the, uh, how the album did um, I don't know I think we're we're still like reflecting on that that album and that uh, what it how how things shifted after that record but the but definitely like looking back singles was created uh once again as a reaction to the previous album sure. um we felt that on the water our third album was was uh kind of completely overlooked or nobody even knew that it came out mm. <laughs> um uh which kind of hurt our feelings <laughs> um and also because of the way uh you know, the way press is, uh, and you know, they read a bio, and, and uh, I think there was kind of a slip up in the idea that uh, this is a concept album, um, or our, thir our third record is a concept album. Or it was not a concept album, it was, just, it was just an album. And because of that, I think people missed the, they read into it too much, and then they felt it, it was a concept incomplete. Right. And we're like, no, it's just a, it's just a record. Um, it's, it's about songs. So singles was, uh, the songs were written and the record, uh, its composition, uh, track listing wise, was, was, uh, was a, approached to just be songs. Right. It was like, it's called singles because we wanted people to not think this is some grand story, but they're songs. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we had talked about calling it short stories <laughs> or vignettes, you know, like these different ideas. But um, singles was a reaction to this, uh, this thing like, don't read too deeply. These are songs and they're individual mm -hmm. stories. So take each one as it as it is. Like like treat each one as a piece of art and not the whole. Um, but because of like William said, like stepping up into a studio, um, some of the things that you know, I think the far field um, 
less in the writing process, more in the recording process. The reaction in the far field was to, uh, to kind of find some of the warmth of the earlier albums um, when we were exploring more um, right. sonically because we were still figuring out what we were doing. Um, uh, and bringing that into the really polished studio sound, bringing some of that warmth back that we felt that singles lacked. I mean, if, if there's any one great fault I have with our last record, it's just the, uh, the kind of lack of, of weird sounds. Uh, <laughs> it was like, or you know, just, it was too polished. Uh, you touched upon something very interesting because, uh, well, like you say, you've been doing this for a while. And is it, complacent isn't, isn't the right word, but after doing a, a certain number of albums, does it become kind of habitual and, and that you kind of lose some of that experimental, uh, is, is that inevitable, inevitable that you kind of start losing that? And then, like you said, well, now you try to recapture some of that warmth. And well, you definitely, I mean, you, you're, all, you're constantly learning. Mm -hmm. um, you're constantly learning from before. Uh, you know, our second record is a much bigger step from our first record. Our third is a step from the second, you right. know, the fourth is a step. So you're, you're hoping to constantly learn. I think you do form habits in your, uh, the way you write or approach things, the sounds that you choose to use. Um, so it's good to explore in those senses, um, but uh, I think the, the big thing about those early albums to me is just that they, uh, yeah, we didn't quite know what we were doing. So you have these these moments. Uh, there's there's a uh, I don't know. It's it's just a bit of magic, mm. you know. Like sometimes you make a mistake that becomes the most important part of the song. Right. Um, the way your voice cracks or uh, a bit of feedback that just happens. Like these become important parts uh, of things and those are those are things you don't think about as much when you're you're uh, making it in your living room um, mm -hmm. as you do when you're like in a studio um, you know so I think the I think the uh, what, what word would I use uh, the standards change mm -hmm. by which you think uh, you should create but sometimes because of that you're you're like I said you should create you're, you're putting a standard on what, what your art is by, by judging it against other people's art. Right. So maybe we said, well, we need to clean up, you know, we want singles to be this studio record that really captures us. Um, and we went for this bigger thing. Uh, but though we might have lost some of the magic, we learned so much by, by going that way. And we couldn't have created the record that we have now, um, forthcoming, without that journey. Sure. Um, to, to try to encapsulate all of it because we hadn't explored that other side yet. But do you, like you say, you kind of try to keep the songwriting process uh, the same, you not, not change uh, too much. But was there pressure because of the success of singles? Did you feel any pressure from outside forces? Yeah, yeah. There's there was pressure. I mean, we we were <coughs> just just knowing that more people were paying attention to what we were doing, knowing that more people would probably hear this album like as soon as it comes out. Uh, definitely put a pressure on the process, but we tried to we tried to not let that affect the way we, that we the way that we do things. We tried to uh, just keep doing things the, the way we always have because. Um, but we found we found success through singles by doing things the way that we've always done. Mm -hmm. So we didn't want to um, shift that too much. I mean, I, w I will say one thing that we did with singles also that we hadn't done before was we took a concentrated break from touring. Oh, yeah. And I think that was another big part of uh, giving ourselves a break and then coming out, you know, w when the album came out, like tour hitting the road hard the way we always did. I think that was another reason that on the water kind of fell between the cracks is because the tour for an, an evening air kind of overlapped with the tour for on the water there was never a concise break mm -hmm. and the same with our first our first album to our second album there was there was no it was kind of like a blurred line of the tour all three albums all three of those albums are just kind of one long tour that kind of morphed and shifted and i think an evening air got a lot of attention because it was our first record on a, uh, on thrill jockey and then our second one uh, it was just, it was so quick, and, and I think uh, we, we didn't realize how important it was just to give, give ourselves a break, and, then, and also f to give the audience a break. Sure. But we <laughs> also know. couldn't afford to take a break. Yeah. I mean, as making art our, our lives and our livelihood, right. like in 2000 and, 
10 was the first year that we could really afford to, or we were, was when we were on the road and we didn't have to come home and work jobs. Um, and we were playing, uh, you know, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, and 2012, we played between 120 and 150 shows a year, mm. every year. So, but by, and in 2010, the beginning of that year was when we, we said, yay, we don't have to be dishwashers or hostesses or uh, laborers. Uh, hostesses. You know. <laughs> Didn't you used to host at the Mexican restaurant? The hostesses. Uh. Oh, ho hosts is what I meant to say. <laughs> I've just added too many S's. Sorry, wife. It's okay. <laughs> uh, um, anyways, I'm sorry. So here I we are. I could have been talking about Garrett. Yeah. Uh, well, Garrett also wouldn't be a hostess. <laughs> anyways, I was talking about myself then. Um, anyways, uh, yeah. So, so in that time, there wasn't. We put out that. We put out an evening air and went on the road. And there wasn't like at the end of that year. I mean, we were making a living doing it, but we couldn't like take a break and not do it. We sure. had to keep working through 2011, uh, where we would write in between tours to make the next record in mid 2011 to put it out at the end of the year and then just keep touring through. Um, but of course, by the end of the five years, we were not only had, had grown so much and gotten to that point where we could afford to take a break, uh, we really needed a break mm. um, after playing 750 shows sure. in, that, in that time. I mean, it's kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. 